بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم ما بعد أي لحبة في الله continuing on our studies of the treaties of Imam Mukfil bin Hadi al Wadi'i, Allah Yahrahamahu, Hadi Dawatana wa Aqidatana. This is our da'wah, this is our propagation, or our call, and our creed. We have had several sittings in discussing the Imam's statement where he said, Nara wujub ta'awan ma ayya Muslim fil haq, that we see cooperating with any Muslim based on the truth. And we presented some of the evidence for that and as the Imam did in many of his books and his treatises and we talked about some of the things to avoid like Hizbiyah and so forth in order to prevent cooperating on battle and cooperating on and falling into the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa ta'awana ala biri wa taqwa wa la ta'awana ala ithmi wa udwan where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and cooperate in righteousness and piety and do not cooperate in sinfulness and enmity so in order to avoid falling into the latter part of the ayat where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says not to cooperate upon hatred and sinfulness this is the point of avoiding hizbiyah of why hizbiyah and cooperating and having ta'awan on things like takfir or ta'awan ala bid'a with ta'awan and, and cooperating on things that are either uh, un-islamic uh, behaviors and activities and methodologies or that they have a basis in Islam but they are greater mashroor in the way that the people are practicing that they are not legislated in the way that the people are practicing so that's another way that we can have uh, fall into bid'ah so this type of cooperation is madhmoom, is haram, is, is impermissible and is sinful and then you fall into the ayat if you are cooperating in bid'ah then of course you are not cooperating in khair, in piety, in taqwa that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated for us to do. So Imam Muqbil was one of those great Imams of the Sunnah, of Ahl Sunnah in this time, who was very stern against uh, bid'ah and Ahl bid'ah. And then mentioning some of the evidences, as we mentioned from the Quran, we said ta'awan ala wa taqwa wa la ta'awan ala ithmi wa duwan, cooperating in piety and uh, God fearfulness or in righteousness and not cooperating in sinfulness and enmity. We've already talked about that in many of the sittings, but just to make sure that we're very clear when we when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions al bir, bir referring to uh, all types of righteousness any and all forms of goodness and righteousness. Anything that falls under goodness and righteousness, then this falls under bir. And this is uh, something that we're commanded to do because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands us to ta'awin. He says, wa ta'awinu, which is in the imperative form, showing us that we have to, com it's, it's a commandment. And whenever we have a commandment in the shara, then it is al-amr yufid al that a command shows us that something in its essence or in its asl in the shara is that it's an obligation. So whenever Allah commands something, or the Prophet ﷺ commands something in his authentic sunnah, ﷺ, then this shows us that it is an obligation unless there's other dalil from the Qur'an and the sunnah to show us that that command is no longer an obligation, that it goes to mustahab, you know, something recommended, or it goes to uh, the other categories, makruh, or haram or what have you so there has to be a sarif so uh, and then when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, says with taqwa so taqwa we have to understand what is taqwa so we translate it commonly as, as God fearfulness or, or righteousness or uh, something like this 
But, however, taqwa in the Arabic language and especially in the Sharia, it has a much more comprehensive meaning. And some of the Salaf referred to a taqwa as being adhering to the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoiding his prohibitions. That this is what real taqwa is. So that when you are practicing your Islam in accordance to the Quran and the Sunnah of the Prophet wasallam, then you are, uh, this is a manifestation of you actualizing taqwa. Taqwa Allah This is what taqwa Allah is. So when you're adhering to the Salat because Allah has commanded you with the Salat, waqimu Salat, and you are doing the Salat, in a manner, in accordance with the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to worship Allah alone, then you are exhibiting taqwa. That's a, a, a part of your taqwa. And that's a part of iman as well. Doing uh, the actions. A, a part of iman through actions. And so, this is what we refer to by taqwa. And likewise, avoiding the prohibitions that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and do not uh, come close to uh, zina, you know, to adultery or fornication. So by you avoiding zina and fornication, you're actualizing taqwa because you're staying away from a prohibition or you're staying away from those things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has uh, prohibited you from. You know, not to steal, not to cheat, not to lie, not to kill people. All of these things, uh, by avoiding those things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you're exhibiting taqwa la You're avoiding those. You're trying to put something between you and the hellfire. And then we talked about uh, what it means to cooperate in sinfulness. And we already know this, so people getting together to uh, make pornography, people getting together to look at pornography, people getting together to look uh, and, and, and to do, to, to plan to rob someone, to kill someone, to steal, uh, to do some sort of bid'ah, then this is ta'awun ali, ta'awun ala ithmi. This is to cooperate in sinfulness, cooperating in bid'ah, cooperating in kufr, Cooperating in shirk, cooperating in killing, cooperating in whatever, zandaka. And likewise, ta'awun ala ithmi wa udwan, udwan meaning enmity, that whenever uh, cooperating in hatred, in hizbiya, meaning getting together and cooperating actually to unjustly uh, make takfir of someone or to unjustly make hajr of someone, to do it out of injustice, uh, to not give salams, to, to cooperate, to plot against someone. All of this is, are, are forms of enmity. And so that's from the Quran, the prohibitions, just some of the prohibitions. One ayat, which is a powerful ayat, which is enough to establish our minhaj alone from that. And then, min nabiyyina, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul al-mu'min lil-mu'min kil dunyan yushidduhu ba'dahu ba'dah The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in, in Bukhari and Muslim from the hadith of Abi Musa al-Ash'ari radiyallahu ta'ala anhu He said the mu'min for the mu'min is like a building or like a structure It strengthens one another And for those of you who are familiar with building and building materials that when you build a house for example, in, a, in, in, a, in America or in the West in general, because we build houses from wood, you see that all these various materials, they strengthen one another. So this is the similitude that the Prophet ﷺ made. So when you're building a house, for example, you start with the foundation. After you've dug, dug up the earth, you start with the foundation. And the foundation, you build, you use concrete forms, and you put rebar, you put steel uh, reinforcement inside those forms. And you use tie wire to uh, tie the rebar together. All of these things help strengthen. That's, be that's before you even begin, the f that's a part of the foundation. Then you pour the concrete, which is a mixture of, of cement, uh, water, and uh, cement and water basically, and rocks. And that's how you get your concrete. So that, then when it dries, around that rebar, you've already made that foundation. On top of that foundation, you also, in the rebar, you have bolts, and you have plates, and uh, those plates are treated wood, and they go on top of the, uh, the concrete. Then you begin to frame your house upon that, and you have the walls, etc. 
Abhutifillah, that similitude is very powerful for us because as you see those building materials, they strengthen one another. The foundation keeps your, your building, you know, when an earthquake, it, it helps bi'idnillah to keep your building from just toppling over. And it keeps your building established firmly that it has a root in the ground. Because you couldn't just put a building, a house on top of the earth and then hopefully it's going to stand because more than likely it's not going to stand very, and, and deal with weather and deal with all the aspects of the natural environment. It will be devastated and will crumble down. But instead you have this strong foundation. So now on top of the foundation you begin to build with wood and whatever other materials you use. And so they strengthen one another. They strengthen one another. And this is what the mu'min does. Al-mu'min lil-mu'min kil bunyan. You should do who, you should do who ba'du ba'du. That the, the believer, for the believer, it's like a building or it's like a structure. They strengthen one another. That's what the mu'min, that's what we should be doing. So that shows us from the sunnah that we should be cooperating in birr wa taqwa. That's how we strengthen one another, is cooperating, assisting one another, assisting one another in need, etc. The Prophet وسلم, said in another hadith, مثل المؤمنين في توادهم وتراهمهم وتعاطفهم كمثل الجزد إذا اشتقى منه عدوى تداعى له سائر الجزد بسهى والهم The Prophet وسلم, said in Sahih Muslim in, uh, from the hadith of Abi Huraira رضي الله تعالى عنه he said that the, uh, the example of the believers is, the, is that they, uh, their, their love, their great love, tawadihim, him and their mercy for one another, him and their affection for one another. It's like a body. So the Prophet ﷺ made this, he made similitudes often. It's like a body. That if one of the parts of the body is in discomfort, uh, in, 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 in a limb or a body part, then the rest of the body suffers from fever and from discomfort. And isn't that the case? What, what's interesting about that, if you've ever had any kind of injuries, you've broken bones or you've had for example, something like sciatica in your back. Something, maybe something simple from some injury you had in the past. And just this sciatic nerve, just a simple pinch of this nerve can make you to where you are unable to walk. You're unable to stand or even sit for prayer. You're unable to lay on your stomach. Do you have to be in a certain position to where it, it, it throbs and it aches and it sends from something simple in the back all the way up where it can practically paralyze you. That shows you from something simple, a pinched nerve, how that affects the rest of your body. And that always makes me think about no matter how big someone is, they can be huge, a huge weightlifter, bodybuilder. But if he has a simple pinched nerve or something in his neck or in his back, it makes the giant incapacitated. So this is the example of, the, of, of how the body is. So the believers are to be similar to that. That when some of the believers are harmed and hurt or suffering, that we should feel that and we should have affection for one another. We should race to, to, to have affection and embracing one another. We should race to be having love for one another. We should race to uh, being merciful with one another. But we're the opposite. And especially, first and foremost, who should be doing this? The Salafis, Ahl Sunnah, should be doing this. This is what Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah said Ahl Sunnah, Arham al Nas bi Khalq. That Ahl Sunnah, they're the first and foremost, they're the most merciful to the rest of the creation. Not everyone running from them and running from their da'wah. So that's an example for us. And that's why we have to analyze and examine ourselves. What are we calling the people? Are you attacking the people every time they come into, they have something doubtful? 
You don't even know a person and you instantly are suspicious of them? Is that what kind of dawah you're doing? If it is, then you better rethink your dawah and make sure your dawah is in conformity to the nasus of kitab Allah wa sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because look at all these nasus, we've just given you three heavyweight uh, evidences from the Quran, which alone you could write a, a, a piece of research from. And then from the sunnah, two ahadith, which are powerful enough to squash all those people who instantly, whenever you come into their masjid, they look at you as if you are a, a scoundrel, as if you are something that crawled from under a rock. No, you're a Muslim. And you should be, and if you are in the Tao of Ahl Sunnah, you should race to call someone away from bid'ah. You should be rushing to be merciful for, to them and give them guidance. What did the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and no matter what, I asked one of our mashayikh, Shaykh uh, Ibrahim Rahili, uh, half of Allah Ta'ala, several years ago, when I lived in Medina. I said, Shaykh, so our mashayikh, they have differences. Mashayikh uh, from Ahl Sunnah about, you know, giving mahadharat or giving lectures to Ahl Bid'ah. You know, Shaykh, what, you know, you know, so since our scholars differ, you know, what, what, uh, you know, what's your view on this? And you know, what, what, what should we do? You know, what does the Nasus lead us to? He said, it really doesn't matter. Getting into all these difference, differences, I'm paraphrasing what he said. But then he, he just told me one simple thing. He said, the Prophet Muhammad, so he came with a Nas first. He didn't have to get into a lot of quiet and principles. But instead, he just dealt with what I said, my answer with a Nas. He said, قَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَمْ لِيَنْ يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجَلٍ وَاحِدٍ خَيْرًا لَكَ مَنْ حَمْرَ النَّامِ He said, if Allah guides by your hand one man, then this is better for you than the red camels. So it's better for you than what the people say and if the people attack you because you went to a masjid to call the people to Kitab Allah wa Sunnah to Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and they didn't like that. They thought you were making the Hizbeen greater or you were, your name was on the fly with the Hizbees or whatever. You know, these are, these are Messiah to look at, no doubt. And some of our ulama, our ulama from Ahl Sunnah, don't like that. For some, like Sheikh Rabi, doesn't uh, like that. Sheikh Obeid, no. Some of the other mashayikh that have a very strong uh, approach with those things, they are totally, they believe in cutting off the, uh, uh, the wasila, the means. In general, this is not in all cases, but in general they hold this view that no, don't do it. But many other mashayikh say, no, look at the maslaha and the mafsada. And actually, those mashayikh do not ignore the mafsada and mafsada, maslada. So don't get that incorrect, that they don't look at the maslaha. But they believe that there's more maslaha, that there's more benefit by avoiding those situations. Whereas other ulama will say, well, look at all the details and maybe take it to the mashayikh or whatever the situation to be able to determine the harms and the benefits. If there's greater harm, greater harm by doing so, that the Hizbis will benefit and, and you won't be calling the Kitab or Sunnah or whatever, or you'll be strengthening their Dawah and strengthening them, then don't do it. But if you are actually, if there's greater benefit, then do so. And the point being, Ahabitifillah, with this Mas'ala, is that the Mu'mineen, they want guidance for one another. So Ahl Sunnah should be Arhamanas, bi Khalq, as Shaykh al Islam ibn Taymiyyah said. We should be the most merciful to the creation. Everyone should be running to Ahl Sunnah, not running from Ahl Sunnah. They should be saying, man, I want to be Salafi because those guys are merciful to us. And those guys call us. Those guys invite us with righteous preaching. And those guys ta'awun ala birr wa taqwa. They don't ta'awun ala hizbiyah. They should be running to the da'wah. And likewise, even the non-Muslims should be running. They should be saying, those guys and women from Ahl Sunnah, you know, they shouldn't be you know, this is just the way it is, but they, they should be running to Islam because of our example. We should be setting good examples for the people to come to Islam. The Prophet Sallallahu said in the hadith of Abi Huraira radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Muslim akhu Muslim, la yudhlamuhu, wa la yakhdaluhu, wa la yahkaruhu, attaquha huna, wa yashira ila sadrihi thalatha marrat, Powerful, powerful hadith. And we're going to stop right there. That's sufficient right there.
without going into any more details. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said in the hadith of Abi Huraira, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, in Sahih Muslim, he said, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, the Muslim is a brother to a Muslim. He doesn't oppress him. He doesn't uh, cheat or deceive him. He does not ridicule him, you know, or belittle him. Atakwahahuna, and the Prophet ﷺ pointed to his chest three times. Atakwahahuna, atakwahahuna, atakwahahuna. That taqwa is in, you know, uh, this God fearfulness is in here. This God fearfulness is in here. This God fearfulness is in here. Uh, it is sufficient for a person. It's enough evil for a person to belittle his brother, Muslim. Every Muslim for a Muslim is haram or is sacred. Every Muslim to a Muslim is sacred. His blood, his wealth, and his honor. Allahu Akbar. Do we even need to explain that? We can break it down and make a book from that hadith. Every Muslim for a Muslim is sacred. So ask yourself, are you practicing this hadith? Are you being looking at the honor of your brothers and sisters? Are you belittling your brothers and sisters? Are you oppressing your brothers and sisters? Are you cheating your brothers and sisters? The Prophet ﷺ said in another beautiful hadith, Prophet ﷺ said in this hadith, Beware of suspicion. Because verily suspicion leads because it's the worst of speech. It's the worst of, 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 of things to spread this evil around the community about people. And do not uh, be hasid. Do not be envious of one another. Do not spy on one another. Do not have hatred and enmity for one another. And do not turn from one another. Do not turn from one another and cut one another off. Turn your backs to one another. Do not cheat one another in a certain type of practice, in a certain type of riba and, and, and illegal uh, transactions with one another. Every Muslim is sacred to one another. Your it is, it's enough evil that you belittle your brother, your brother Muslim. Every Muslim is sacred and they're sacred to one another. Their blood, don't kill one another, don't shed one another's blood. Their wealth, don't take one another's wealth unlawfully. And their ird, their honor, do not belittle one another and trample on one another's honor. So ask yourself, the next time you want to refute someone, and it's not based on kitab ilah wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it's not based on ilm, see how you're holding up into that. And that's just an advice. That's just an advice for myself and anyone. Because it doesn't mean we don't refute Ahl Bid'ah that are Muslim from our Muslim brothers and sisters who went astray. We want them to come back. That's the point though. Is you want good for them. You want them to be guided. Or you want their harm to be uh, taken away from the community. So that's why you're harsh with them. It's for the sake of Allah. It's not for the sake of yourself. It's not for the sake of building yourself up. Because we have, we have these strong masus. We can't oppress one another. Even from Ahl Bid'ah. You can't oppress them. You can't cheat them. You can't lie about them. You can't belittle them in a manner not in conformity with the shara. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.